Well, greetings, Mr. Kolozar's class. We're going to look into now naming acids. So as we're going, we're going to look at naming chemical formulas for acidic or acid-containing compounds. Now, by definition, acidic compounds have hydrogen as the first atom in their chemical formula. So when they're placed in water, acids can ionize, meaning to make positive and negative hydrogen ions, which means they're going to separate into their cation, the hydrogen positive part, and an anion, a negative something part. So an example of this, as we're in hydrogen, HCl is one of our stomach acids. It could separate when in water, dissolving into the hydrogen ion, plus a negative cat ion. So hydrogen chlor, HCl, could separate into the H plus and the Cl minus. So again, it gets to our ionic compound, the plus and minus part. Again, they're going to start with hydrogen as going to be our cue for an acid. So our first part is, again, we're going to draw that line between the first element and the rest of it. If it's an H for hydrogen, then it's going to be an acid. So that's our cue right away that we have an acid. So to determine then the name of the anion, we're going to use the gold packet. So gold packet or your periodic table, depending on what it might be. We're going to use the rules of naming anions from our gold packet. So I've cut that out and shown on the side here your gold packet. You need to find in the gold packet this list. It's going to be our important one of how and where we can find the names and how to change them for each of our acids. So we have our rules set up here. Write the name of the new or the new name ending in acid. That's going to indicate from our formula to name that we have an acid. And side note, not all acids begin with the word hydro, only a few of them do. So you might hear like hydrochloric acid. That's one example we're going to look at right now. Hydro not always is going to be the intro name. So our first step, our example, drawing our line between the positive and negative part. It begins with H, so we know automatically it's an acid. So our first step then is we're going to use some clues to find out about the second part here. And then our naming of the rules to begin with on that one. So our first step, then chlorine here, or chloride as we would know it. So CLs are minuses are chloride ion. So what we need to do is chloride ion, we need to go down to our list. It ends in IDE. So we're going to use our first rule here. We're going to start with the name hydro. Then we're going to put the stem of the word in, end it in IC, and then add the word acid afterwards. So chloride, our stem of chloride is chlor. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it hydro chloric and then hydro our stem add an IC and then they always end the name of an acid always ends with acid. So then hydro chloric acid would be then be the name of that compound. So let's try a few practice problems out here. Our first one, we're going to draw a line after our hydrogen. And now we're going to inspect first off that CO3 part. So using your gold packet, finding out the polyatomic ion that we're needing here, CO3 with a minus 2 charge. CO3 with a minus 2 charge, carbonate. So we'll move back. So we have carbonate. So using your gold packet, if it ends in carbonate, ends in ATE, or from our rules, we're going to take the stem of carbonate, carbon, our carb, end it in the IC, and add the word acid. So carbonate turns to carbonic. 
and then we always add it or end with acid. So in the end, H2CO3, carbonic acid. Now if we wanted to note, CO3 is a minus 2. To keep minus 2 balanced, hydrogen is a plus or plus 1. So when we'd crisscross, we would end up with those two hydrogens there. So you don't need to worry about that yet. That's going to be coming up when we write the formulas why there's the H2CO3. It comes because they're balanced out there. So for our second one, it begins with H. So we automatically know it's going to be an acid. Ends with fluoride. So what we need to do is look back to our gold packet. Oops. Fluoride up top ends in IDE. So fluoride, as we're going, we'll need to check out our rules. Fluoride is what we're ending with. So if it ends in fluoride, IDE, we need to go with hydro. The stem of fluoride, our fluoride is fluor, and then end in ICE. So hydro fluor and then add IC hydrofluoric and they always end acids with the name acid hydrofluoric acid. Our next one HNO2 we know right away it's going to be an acid so we need to find NO2 on our periodic or our gold packet NO2 is nitrite. So nitrite different ends in ITE so we need to look on to our gold packet for those rules and in the end nitrate from our rules nitrite there the stem of nitrite nit ends in OUS and acid so we're going to call it nitrous acid. And then H2S ends or begins with H, so we know it's an acid. Sulfur, or known as sulfide, is what we'd have as our anion on this side. So if it ends in sulfide, ends in IDE, sulfide, hydro, and then stem. Now at the bottom we got this note, sulf and phosphorus are kind of funny. With sulfur and phosphorus we actually use the whole name instead. So when it comes to sulfide, as we're changing it, we're going to have our name hydro. sulfuric acid. So we don't actually use just the root of it, we're going to use the whole word when it comes to the sulfurs and the phosphorus. So naming or writing of our formulas. Now just the opposite, we can start with the name and go back to the formula. So first off, what we're going to look at is draw a line. If you see the word acid in the name you know it's an acid. So that's going to be our part that we're going to look at there. We're going to use clues from the name to determine what anion we actually have. And that's where our gold packet anions and then our rules are going to come back in handy. And then this is where we find out how many hydrogens we actually have. It's from that H pluses needs to balance how much ever negative charge you have. So negative one, you'd have one hydrogen negative 2 equals 2 hydrogens, negative 3 you would need 3 hydrogens to balance because each of those are a plus and that's as large as the number wise gets there. So as we're going, our first one we'll look at chloric. So chloric acid. We know right away that it's an acid, duh, we got acid in the name. So chloric acid. As we're going, we need to come down here. Chloric acid. 
as we're looking. Chloric ends in IC, so we're going to change it from chloric to chlorate. So it ends in ATE, so we need to find chlorate from our chloric acid. So as we're looking, chlorate ClO3 with a minus 1 charge. So chlorate ClO3 with a minus 1 charge. Now all of our acids always begin with hydrogen with a plus. Chlorate ClO3 minus 1. When we crisscross the numbers, our ending formula HClO3. We don't write the ones in. So using your gold packet, you've got your polyatomic ions and you've got your rules for naming our acids. So to try a few out. Hydroiodidic acid. Automatically know that it's going to begin with our H+. So to try that out, we need to use our rules. It started out hydroiodidic is going to be our beginning part. So as we're looking, we need that stem iodine. Our iodidic is going to turn to our iodine. So we need to find out iodine, or excuse me, iodide on the periodic table. So to begin with, iodide is I with a minus one. Group 17 halogen. Hydrogen is always a plus. So when we crisscross, we end up with hydrogen and iodine, just one of each. HI begins with, hello, how are you doing? Begins with hydrogen, because it's an acid. Iodide, or iodidic, hydroiodidic, changed again into beginning out our iodide ion. Acetic acid. Acetic acid ends in IC. So acetic, we're going to look back, ends in IC. If it ends in IC, what we're going to have to do is find out, as we said, oops, ends in IC. So we need to go across and find out changing that ending anion to ATE. So acetate from acetic. So acetate is the ion we need from acetic ending. So acetate down at the bottom here of your gold packet. Acetate C2H3O2 with a minus one charge. C2H3O2 with a minus one charge. Always our acids begin with hydrogen or H plus. So when we crisscross one and one H C two H three O two. So acetic acid. Third one, sulfurous acid. Remember, sulfur is our first part here. So sulfurous acid, ending O U S, and it's a sulfur containing compound. So we need to go back to our chart. Ends in O U S. If it ends in OUS, sulfurous is going to return to our sulfite, so we need to find out who sulfite is. Sulfate, sulfite. Sulfite, SO3 with a minus 2 charge from your gold packet. So sulfurous, SO3 with a minus 2 charge. And it begins an acid, so we know it contains hydrogen to start with. Crisscross, 1SO3, and 2 hydrogens, H2SO3, sulfurous acid.
And our last one to try out, hypobromous acid. So it begins hypobromous and then again ends with acid. So our second word we know right away we have an acid. Now if it's hypobromous, our stem OUS. So if it's OUS ending, we're going to change it to ITE. So we need to find bromus is going to be bromite. So we need to go through and find bromus bromite. BRO2 with the minus. So BRO2 and it's got a minus one overall charge. It's an acid again, always begins with hydrogen. When we crisscross, don't write our ones, H, B, R, O, two. So always remember your gold packet and those rules for naming acids. will get you through this. So you just need to be using those clues about the names of them to move back to finding out what the chemical formulas are. You can continue working on the naming assets worksheet now.